Saturday means. It's time for the weekly recap. And you want to know what? I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. More disappointed than when you put your money in the vending machine and the thing gets caught and you get nothing. You know what I mean? It's rough. Why am I disappointed? Well, we were poised for a, a very nice week. A very nice week. And then, eh, is what happened. Eh. So, Dow on five day, um, down 0.17 actually. So, down, surprisingly. Uh, week today after some very good earnings, but we'll get into some of the reasons why. Overall, um, it's really just Friday that kind of threw it off, but uh, Monday, yeah, and you'll see it with all the other indices too. Obviously, there was no earnings. Earnings kicked off on Tuesday, so that's where you see that growth. Um, Monday, there was nothing going on at all, so really just flat day. Tuesday, we finally got some earnings for companies, and they were for you know majority very good. The whole week, earnings were majority good, and that's you know they're better than expectations, and that's really why. Um, everything was up. I mean, it was up, we were up around one and a half percent for the whole week, uh, up until Friday. So Friday brought it down to where pretty much we ended flat, you know, but overall we should have had a good week. Uh, earnings were good, which is still exciting for next week when we kick in more earnings because that can, you know, turn the tide pretty quickly. Um, Coca-Cola re- reported earnings Friday. One of the few stocks that was actually, uh, managed to sneak up in a day that we were down, um, around, one percent so not too bad uh, looking at the S&P um, we're gonna go to five day here so you can see the same story Ooh, it's a it's dodging me uh, you see the same story here um, a little bit less of a drop which is why it ended up 0.54 for the week the Dow really got hammered Friday which is uh, we'll get into that um, but same story here earnings we shot up real high and Friday kind of just lagged a little bit, you know. Monday, nothing going on. So, yeah, up 4, 5, 0.54 for the week. Still up 19 year to date and uh, one year up 8%. Uh, in this uh, indice, I want to index, I want to point out uh, Netflix. Uh, it was one of the stocks I spotlighted in their earnings. And obviously, um, Posted a very good earnings here, uh, beat by 42 cents EPS, revenue in line, growth of 31 percent, and a growth in streaming. But they mi- they missed their their goals, and as I stated in that video, I didn't expect things to continue as mo- as well as they did. So needless to say, it actually <laughs> ended up down for the week. So down 3.5 percent for the week after. I mean. It's what I expect after, you know, a jump in, you know, 10%. Um, when people actually looked at the underlying financial numbers that were there, it was pretty obvious that, you know, a 10, uh, 10% increase wasn't going to stand. And, in fact, it turned into a decrease on the week, um, which I, I did expect um, just due to the fact that, I mean, they, the numbers were good, but, again, it, their forecast was – that this was a fluke quarter, you know, that they even forecasted that the quarter was a fluke. It was just they had some extra cash from some legal proceedings, and that was about it. Um, and their forecast is is low, you know, low low increases in subscribers, low increase, um, or actually a very big decrease in cash flow. Uh, really, for the most part, it looks like quarter four is going to be rough. So if they beat quarter four, they can jump up again. But I think overall, it's still going to be stagnant until quarter four because. There's nothing driving them right now, um, in my perspective. Uh, those numbers just didn't look good for, you know, Outlook. So that's why Netflix ended up down uh, on the week, even though good earnings happened. So that's just so you know. I mean, good earnings doesn't necessarily mean anything. It, it, there's so many factors that go into earnings and what investors are going to take from it. And obviously, it took a day for them to take away the fact that uh, the forecast was rough. But you know what they did, and then... Yikes! They got uh, they got burned. Let's go right into the Nasdaq now. <clears throat> Everyone got got to love the Nasdaq up 0.4 percent, evading me. Let's look at this five day chart again. Pretty much same story as the S and P. Um, 
stagnant Monday, good week otherwise, would have been up around 1.5%, and then Friday, rough, and then they turned it around to end up not as bad. It was still a decrease on the day, but that's all right. Um, here I was going to spotlight one of the losers, as you see here, um, Marathi Therapeutics, never heard of the company, but they reported earnings, which I believe is why. Um, never mind, that's not why, but I mean, I mean, look at this company. I was just looking at valuation of this company. There's no like major news that's actually determining this. Um, I, I couldn't find anything big, at least, that would be down 10%, but I mean, EPS of negative 1.26 cents per share, revenue of 0.58 million. Look at how, I mean, look at the valuation of this company. My gosh, am I insane to think that, I mean, this is a $76 stock. Holy crap, cash of, I mean, half a billion only, and they're making, they're not even making a billion, and oh my, that's just crazy valuation, that's why it's crazy to invest in any, um, <laughs> any of these pharmacy stocks, biofarms, it's, you never know, uh, or therapeutics, again, you just never know what the valuations are going to be like on these, some of these are crazy, you can make a lot of money on them, but a lot of times there's not really backing for it, so it's all speculation. So we'll get into uh, now some of the reasons of, of what's going on here. So why do we have such a rough last day of the week? Um, well, a lot of it's majorly just because of a, a pretty decent probability of a Chinese recession. Chinese economy is very weak right now. Um, GDP grew weaker than they expected, 6%. Slowest pace uh, in 27 years. So... That's pretty crazy. So from China's perspective, if you're looking at it, I think they're really going to be incentivized to try to end this potential trade war. I know they, they certainly produce a lot of a lot of products there, very low price. A lot of people do that um, just because they can get real cheap labor out of China. And, you know, labor rates are real cheap in China. So it makes sense for companies cutting expenses, but it's certainly a little bit messed up. Um this could be very rough for China, especially, I mean, we'll, we'll see how things go. Um, obviously, I think it's going to be rough with, with a lot of our major corporations bowing down to the Chinese government because they know the size of the market and what it can mean for them, which I understand from a business perspective, but overall, I mean, Chinese government's a little messed up, but more than a little messed up, but don't want to get too, too egregious here. I, I do have a lot of respect for um, Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook. Honestly, I mean, a lot of the times we think of him as super left-leaning guy, and, and he definitely is left-leaning, there's no doubt about it, but he stood behind Facebook and not um, not getting into the Chinese market because he believes in democracy and free speech to an extent, obviously. I mean, that's obviously, you know, debatable because it's Mark Zuckerberg and they, they are trying to make you know, hate speech, quote unquote, hate speech go away. And there's certainly definitely some bias there. But overall, if I'm considering it, Facebook is a lot less biased than than like Twitter. 100%. I, I don't know if anyone else has noticed that. But um, if you look anything, anything that's promoted on Twitter, anything that's, I mean, anything political, anyone that's verified, it's usually going to be, you know, what you see are going to be the Let's see, left, I'll say left side. Um, and you know, Facebook, it certainly is similar, but I think there's there's definitely a little bit more option for people to see other opinions. You know, I, I think Twitter's very blocked off in what you can see. That, that's just my opinion on the matter. Um, but overall, I mean, shoot, this U.S.-China thing is going to get a little bit more tense, I think, just because of, you know, the NBA bowing down, Activision Blizzard bowing down. We'll see how things go. Uh, other reasons for the Dow getting hit specifically would be uh, Boeing and Johnson Johnson hit pretty hard. So both these companies have earnings coming up this week. Uh, Boeing down 6.8% um, after apparently they misled safety systems uh, about the 737 MAX, obviously the, the plane that has caused two fatal crashes, which is rough. Um, which are landed now, but if they obviously misled, that could be a huge legal concern for them, and Boeing could be getting hit very hard for that, um, as they already are facing a lot of legal expenses. And Johnson & Johnson down 62 
uh, recall of some baby powder, finding traces of asbestos. So guess what? They might get in contact with some lawyers who treat specifically mesothelioma because somehow there are lawyers in the world that only deal with mesothelioma cases. How does that happen? Well, apparently there must be a lot of money in there, so quit inhaling uh, asbestos, please. That's all I can tell you. Get these lawyers out of business. Get them doing something else. Gosh dang. Um... So, but for the most part, as you see there, 81% re beat Wall Street estimates on their earnings. So, hey, I mean, shoot, it should have been a very good week. So what's what's going on here? Um, that's just frustrating. Maybe we can turn things around next week, but but obviously we're in time a lot of tension. If Chinese government go, or if China goes into a recession, it could be a little rough. But we'll see how things turn around. And finally, a little noteworthy thing is uh, UK's parliament. Delayed the approval of a Brexit deal. Okay, that's pretty cool. Just barely snuck ahead, 322 to 306. Um, so, there we go. Uh, obviously, we'll see how that goes. It, re it requires him to, to um, request a delay. But, we'll see what Mr. Johnson wants to do. Come on, Boris. That's all I got for you. It's an interesting week, and we'll look forward to a good one next week.